Hi everyone, it's Sue Plum here to share another scrapbook process video with you. Today's layout that I'm sharing was created for the Coco Vanilla Studio design team and I am working with the gorgeous Sunkissed collection. Now, before I go any further, I must apologise for my croaky voice. I was at a concert yesterday and I really should have recorded this voiceover before I went to said concert because I have lost a little bit of my voice. So, moving on. Um, this is, uh, layout was a mixed media layout that I, as I said, created for Coco Vanilla Studio. And I was actually scrapping some photos of my boys swimming in the pool. So I'm working with blues and greens from the collection today. I decided to focus on those two tones because I thought they would go well with the swimming theme of this layout. So I started with a sheet of 12 by 12 white cardstock, which I actually cut down to measure 11 by 11. And then I used my Distress Oxides just to add sort of a watery sort of vibe um, to the background there. And I used one of my favourite quick and easy techniques, which is simply using my non-stick mat. And I just swipe the ink pads onto my non-stick mat, add a few spritzes of water, just mix it around with my fingertip. And then I just lay the cardstock down over the top just to pick up the colour and soak it up. Now, there's no gesso or anything on this cardstock. It's just straight, plain, 300 GSM white cardstock, and it just sucks up the colour beautifully. So I did it first with the new uh, Salvage Patina colour, and then I laid some Twisted Citroen over the top of that just to add a little bit of that greenish touch in there. I then went in with this little Scattered Hearts stencil and another one of my Distress Oxides, that's Faded Jeans there, which is one of my favourites, and just a little sponge, and I just sponged on some heart stencil detail onto my background just to give it that extra little something. So the, the actual design of this page was kind of dictated by my background, which is one of the things that I, I like to do. I don't know how I'm going to set things out when I start these pages. When I use this technique, I allow my design sort of to be worked around the mixed media that I've got on the page. So as you can see, you can see that sort of pattern that I ended up there. I had the three photos that I was working with. So I had a main sort of six by four, and then I had those two other small square photos that I was working with. And I'm just fiddling around with placement here, trying to work out the best way to arrange these photos, but not cover up too much of that mixed media work that I'd already done. I mean, when you do mixed media, it's kind of inevitable that you will end up covering up so much of it. But let's face it, part of the fun is the process, right? So once I had figured out how I was going to lay out these photos, I then went in and created some pattern paper layers in the center of my page where I knew that the main photo was going to sit. So that blue sort of animal print that I'm working with there, that paper is actually from the A5 paper stack and it's actually a pattern that is unique to that paper stack. You won't find that blue animal print in any of the 12 by 12 papers. And then I was also using some other scraps of paper that I had from some 12 by 12 papers. You can see that I've got that teal sort of chevron print there. I also matted my photo um, with that cloud print paper from the A5 paper stack. So that's just got that sort of smaller scale cloud print than you will find in the 12 by 12 papers. And I was just looking at building up these layers behind my main photo. So I had several different pieces of pattern paper and I added texture then by you know, sort of tearing the edges of them and, and ripping them a little bit and bending the edges up because I do like the way that that sort of torn paper adds texture to a page. Um, you can see I've got the Good Vibrations paper there, which is that striped paper. And I really just wanted to cut a small piece of this to run horizontally across the page and give me that strong horizontal line. I do like to often have a strong horizontal line like this. And I try to sort of place it about where your main point of interest is. And obviously that is my boy's faces in this photo. So I try and sort of run that behind their eye line where the photo is going to sit. So I am still here building up all these layers. You can see that I'm using my T-square there to keep my papers nice and straight on the page. There is nothing that ticks me off more on my own pages than not having those anchor pieces straight on the page. Now, I also added some extra interest and texture 
to my stack here you can see that I've added a blue paper doily from my stash and I'm now going in with some frayed gauze which I added over the top it just gives it that nice soft texture and I just love the way it adds extra interest to the page so I am just staple, using my long arm stapler there stapling down the stack onto the page so that it won't wriggle around on me and I'm back fluffing around with these small square photos I wanted the placement just right now when I had them sitting there like that I thought they were getting a little bit lost on the page and they needed a little bit of a layer behind them so you will see that I go in after I've stuck this photo down you'll see that I go in with um, one of the cards from the pocket card pack and it's actually just um, a card that's got a blue frame on it and what I did was I just cut it in half and I tucked half in behind that top square photo and half in behind that bottom square photo and you'll see how that darker blue frame just helps lift them off the page a bit and bring them up to the eye and separate them from the background so there's the pocket card kit uh, pack there and you'll see that blue frame that I've got now once I had all my papery layers in place on this page I went in with the um, embellishments from this range now I love how many embellishments were included in this collection because not only do you have a die cut ephemera pack there's also the separate floral ephemera pack there are glitter um, gold foam titles there's puffy stickers there's regular accessory stickers like there is just so many things to play with this in this collection and I just love it so I was actually planning on using those glitter foam titles as the title for this page and I was so thankful that I actually did leave enough room to the right of my main photo there to fit the title in because I didn't check that before I went and stuck anything down so thankfully it did fit perfectly where I intended it to. I love it when things work out like that, don't you? Do you actually check that your title's going to fit before you stick everything down or do you make your title fit the space that you have left? Very curious to know because generally title's not really the main thing I think about when I'm setting out a layout. I usually just make my titles work wherever. So yeah, you can see those. I love those glitter titles the other reason I love those glitter titles is because they don't shed glitter all over my desk which I really appreciate so I actually pulled out two of those little glittery hearts as well which come in the same pack and I just stuck one onto each of those individual photos of my boys um, you can see that another thing that I've done there is I do like embellishing directly onto my photos um, and on my main photo there I've stuck that just chilling little banner piece along the bottom edge there and you'll see afterwards that I actually go back and I add a tab up in the right corner too that says be happy. So on the left of my photos I wanted to create a little bit of a cluster and I wanted to help sort of frame in that side of the layout and close it off a bit. So I used those two die cut palm trees. I stuck one down flat onto the page and then bent the leaves up from the page and then with the second one I actually went in and I popped a little bit of foam tape underneath it just to give it some dimension and help separate it from the one behind it. On the right side of my photos there I didn't generally go with those sort of three strong clusters like I usually do simply because of the way that this page was structured. I went around I really just tucked in embellishments in around my photos. So I've tucked in a cute little cloud up above the right corner of that top photo. Um, to the right of my main photo I ended up adding the um, sweet little um, heart sunglasses that you can see there and I did pop those up onto foam tape too just to provide an extra bit of sort of layering in my cluster there. Um, down alongside that bottom photo I added that little beach towel that says um, sunshine state of mind and that worked really well sort of tucking in under those torn paper layers that I already had there. So it was a fairly easy page to structure once I had the mixed media done for this page. That kind of, as I said, dictated how the entire layout was going to be structured. Now when it came to finishing off this page, it was fairly simple. I went in with those gorgeous little puffy stickers that I absolutely love and I must not hoard, I must use. So I, I did go and add quite a few of those around the place on my page and I just again stuck to the blue and green tones that I was working with just so that everything would tie together really well. 
Um, to finish off my page, I stamped my date on there. I also used one of my roller stamps from my stash just to stamp out a few little phrases on there. And I splattered some black ink at the end because that just helped to tie in those dark colours that were in the photo. And it also helped to tie in the journaling that I wrote on there in black pen and the stamped date, which was also with black ink. So it's just looking for that sort of way to tie those last elements in together. Now, this was a super fun page to put together. I'm really happy with how it came out. I do love creating boy layouts. Um, if you want to see more boy inspiration from me, just let me know in the comments or whatever you want to see from me or any techniques or questions you might have, and I will get back to you as soon as possible. Um, thank you so much for watching today. I hope you've enjoyed this video and I've inspired you to go and get creative too. I'll see you next time. Bye.